सो वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग क्वेश्चन नंबर एटीन एज गिवन इन द फिगर देर आर फोर चार्जेस क्यू वन क्यू टू क्यू थ्री एंड क्यू फोर देर रेस्पेक्टिव पोजिशन आर शोन इन द फिगर वी आर आज डेज डायरेक्शन ऑफ नेट फोर्स ऑन द चार्ज स्मॉल क्यू सो लेट स्टार्ट विथ ऑप्शन पी All posi- all are positive charges and they are given of the same magnitude. So Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4 are the same magnitude, and in option P, all are positive charge. So Q2 will exert force in this direction. Q1 will exert force along this direction. Similarly, Q3 will exert force in this direction, and Q4 will exert force in this direction. As Q3 and Q2 are at equal distance from Q and they are making same angle. so the component due to q2 and q3 which is this and this will have net positive y component we are taking this as positive y and this is positive x similarly due contribution due to q1 and q4 which is this and this will have vertical component so net force will be in plus y direction which gives us p as Three. Interestingly, P has answer three in option A and C only. In A and C, both have Q as one, so it's useless to check Q as one because both will have same answer. Now let's check R. In R, we are given Q one as positive, Q four as positive, and Q two and Q three negative. So now these two vectors. Will be in opposite directions. So this vector will be along this direction, and this vector will be along this direction. So component of net resultant of Q two and Q three will be along this direction, and by Q one and Q four will be along this direction. Now the question is, whose magnitude would be more? As we see, Q two and Q three are both at a lesser distance from small Q. so the magnitude of this force and this force let's name let's name them f f f2 f3 so f2 f3 will be greater than f1 and f4 to add on they are making a smaller angle theta so their contribution will be more and they are making a larger angle alpha so their contribution will be less so the downward component by q2 and q3 will be more as upward component from q1 and q4 so the net force in option r will be downwards which is minus y so that leaves us option r as 4 minus y you can also verify for q and s which would come out to be 1 and 2 so our answer would be answer to this problem would be Now we will be testing question number nineteen. It is given that there are two thin lenses, and their various combinations are given in P, Q, and R, and S. So the radius of curvature of all the curved surfaces is R, and refractive index of the material is one point five. Now we have to find the focal length for each combination. So let's start with P. P is a combination of these two lenses. Let's say ray is coming in this direction. So, as convention goes, let's suppose this is its focal length is f1 and its focal length is f2. We have to find resultant focal length, effective focal length, which would be given by one by capital F is equal to one by f1 plus one by f2. We want to calculate this now. F1 would be as given by formula. One by F1 is equal to mu minus one, one by R1 minus one by R2. Where R1 and R2 are radius of curvature of R1 is radius of curvature of first surface and R2 is radius of curvature of second surface. So let's calculate F1 for this particular lens. Now this is R1 and this is R2. As we have assumed rays coming in this direction, so this side will be positive and this side will be negative as per the surface goes. So R1 would be R and R2 would be minus R. Therefore, one by F1 is equal to. We'll put values 1.5 minus one 
वन बाय आर माइनस विच विल गिव अस पॉइंट फाइव इंटू टू बाय आर दैट इज वन बाय आर सिमिलरली सो दैट गिव्स अस एफ वन इज इक्वल टू आर सिमिलरली एफ टू इज इक्वल टू आर बिकॉज सेकेंड लेंथ इज सेम एज फर्स्ट लेंथ दैट इंप्लाइज दैट वन बाय कैपिटल एफ इज इक्वल टू वन बाय आर प्लस वन बाय आर what we have done we have put the values of f1 and f2 which is r and r in the formula so that will be 2 by r that implies that effective focal length would be r by 2 so p option effective focal length is r by 2 which means p is matching with 2 so p has an answer 2 in interestingly p2 is coming in option b and d now we have to verify for q so let's see what q is so this is q now formula would be same now let's take this lens first first lens radius of curvature of the flat surface is infinite and this would be minus r so putting the values 1 by f1 is equal to 1.5 minus 1 1 by infinite minus which is equal to 1 by 2r similarly calculating for this this has radius r1 equal to r and r2 equal to infinite That implies that one by f two is equal to one point five minus one. Applying the same formula, one by r minus one minus infinite. That is equal to one by two r. So that implies putting these values in this formula, one by f is equal to one by two r plus one by two r, which is equal to one by r. That implies that f is equal to r. So we have got. effective focal length is equal to r for q which is fourth option in math the golem so our answer is b so our answer is b you can also verify by the same formula for r and s for r it will come out to be minus r and for s it would come out to be 2r let's discuss question number 20 it says there are two blocks of mass m1 and m2 which is 1 kg and 2 kg are kept on an inclined plane having angle theta friction coefficient between m1 and the plane is 0 and the friction coefficient between m2 and plane is 0.3 now depending on the value of theta we have to tell what is the value of friction acting on the system now we know that friction slipping will start when g sin theta due to both will overcome friction that is we know slipping starts when m1 plus m2 g sin theta is greater than the friction force which is acting only on m2 so it will be mu n which will be m2 g cos theta putting the values we will get 1 plus 2 sin theta greater than 0.3 into 2 cos theta therefore tan theta greater than 0.6 by 3 that is equal to 0.2 so tan theta is equal to 0.2 as given in the question is 11.5 so when theta is greater than 11.5 slipping will occur and when slipping will occur kinetic friction will act on the system so let's check out options theta equal to 5 degree which is less than 11.5 degree so in case p when theta equal to 5 degree no slipping will occur so it is a case it is a case of static friction which will 
just balance the forces needed so it will be so when theta equal to 5 degree and there is no slipping then friction will just be equal to m1 plus m2 g sin theta similarly when theta equal to 10 degree friction will just be equal to m1 plus m2 g sin theta so that will give us answer as p2 and q2 now when theta equal to 15 degree the system will slip and friction will act kinetic friction which will be mu2 mu m2 g cos theta so in case of theta equal to 15 degree and 20 degree friction on the system is kinetic which is equal to mu m2 g cos theta so the answer would be d